Well, 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 it's Friday the 23rd of August, and welcome to Virgo season. Our metaphor for the next month is gold panning, a careful and deliberate sifting of gold from the world around us that would otherwise have washed downstream. This is episode 1921 of 301 Permanently Moved to Online, a personal podcast 301 seconds in length, written, recorded, and edited in one hour by me, at the JMO. Last week, I neglected to mention that my most listened to show by quite some margin is episode 1914, Media Property Name Isn't Your Friend. And if you're new around here and haven't heard it, well, that episode serves as a foundation from which we build today's precarious scaffolding of ideas. It is with my greatest regret that I must inform you that people are mad about something on the internet. This week, amongst many other unimportant things, brings us the news that two members of the corporate cultural oligarchy are at loggerheads over the licensing of Spider-Man. Squinting from my cave entrance, it appears that four years ago, Disney and Sony brokered a deal to share the character of Spider-Man, owned by Sony, that involved Disney co-financing Spidey movies in exchange for a share of the profits. Without a deal, Spidey has to websit from the MCU and people are really mad. Now let me be clear, I don't particularly have a spider in this web at all. I haven't seen a Spider-Man movie since Tony Maguire battled William Dafoe or whoever, but here's what the reaction to this news has been like from people that do care. No! No! Do not fuck with our characters, guys! Seriously, please, for the love of God. The key word in that clip is our characters. Previously, I spoke about how deep engagement with fictional worlds should give people agency within them. But when our entire culture is privatized, what can people do when they don't own it other than fold it into the culture war? More sinister are the headlines that both Sony and Disney are weaponizing the collective outrage of fans to further their contract negotiations. There's petitions and all sorts of madness going on. On one side, apparently fans want to quote unquote storm Sony HQ and bring their boy home to the MCU. On the other, you have literal Stan stands siding with Sony as Stan Lee's daughter has fallen on that side of the argument. And then, you have an important third actor, which is the vast swarm of bots helping hashtag save Spider-Man trend. On that front, both sets of fans have speculated that Disney is behind the bots in an attempt to turn public sentiment against Sony. And given the ongoing shenanigans with the Amazon brand ambassadors, it isn't that far-fetched. The contemporary media environment is totally controlled and manipulated. Perhaps we should be storming Exxon's HQ and petitioning Brazilian embassies over the destruction of the Amazon, but I digress. Basically, what I've spent the last three minutes talking about is people feeling emotionally invested in multinational conglomerates' business deals about whether one character gets to appear in someone else's story, neither of which the folks that consume those stories own. The solution I offered last time was to roll your own culture, but it is exactly the telling of and what kind of stories are being told that we need to interrogate today. Sometimes, in my more offhand moments, I have a recurring thought that haunts me every freaky friday of the night of the living dead but i have great expectations that hopefully i am wrong maybe francis fukuyama was right lots of folks seems to have noticed that in many respects the mass culture that we share is stuck reappropriating gramsci i would say that the new cannot be born whilst the corpse of the old is constantly resuscitated to perform again and again on stage years ago now laurie penny wrote something like on the internet all of cultural history is happening concurrently all at once and it stuck with me. If you're into cool jazz and want to iterate, but don't step to jazz fusion, then go for it. Walk the genre at 1955 into 2019. Our nice, neat cultural historical timelines of evolution and revival are broken. This shattering of individual interests has actually caused an excess of creativity. It's not that all the reboots, remakes, and nostalgic mashups like Ready Player One, no, I haven't seen the movie, are unoriginal, it's that under the logic of capitalist cultural monopoly, commodity owners have to continually frack the past from a time when a collective cultural grammar still existed to make money. And the culture that is being fracked suffers deeply from what Jeanette Ng said in her Campbell Award speech this week. It's sterile, male, and white. This requirement of stable expectations kind of holds true in video games where the idea of East-West Forever War is fracked as much as shooting Nazis. And the Richard and Judy Book Club probably full stops an era of a shared experience in literature circa 2008. When I was talking about this with sci-fi author Andrew Dana Hudson yesterday, he observed that perhaps Marcuse was right. Class consciousness is all about aesthetics. 
And it's the use of the word our characters in that clip that is a concrete recognition that the public is being constantly dispossessed of its stories by private interests. Because people recognise themselves in their commodities, what we are seeing in WebSit is an unarticulated response to a feeling of alienation. The only solution is to roll your own culture, avoid imperial entanglements, don't get mad about other people's stories, tell your own.